I've defined abstraction more formally in a previous video in this series, but here we want to see what it looks like in a classroom activity, where a programming environment could be used as mathematical playground to explore the concept of angle, and in the process, build some good practice in algorithms and coding. Students in years 4 to 6 should benefit from this exploration, but it could also be used in years 7 and 8. The concept of angle is very central to mathematics. Younger students experience a circular part of whole fraction model, leading to the interpretation of pie charts, or they might use a compass to show or interpret direction. Geometric reasoning naturally flows from a good grounding in the concept of angle. Later, students need to recognise the relationship between an angle and the swept area of the sector, or work with angles of inclination and declination, or the gradient of a line and a tangent, and ultimately, calculus. Angles may be seen as static things rather than having the dynamic property of rotation. Additionally, students can often wrongly believe that the size of an angle depends on the length of its arms. Let's look at two things, identifying angles as measures of turn and how we can abstract this concept to build a model of a regular polygon. The aim is twofold, building a better geometric understanding and demonstrating the notion of extraction in computational thinking, particularly the way that modelling can assist in the development of algorithms. In this video, we'll use Scratch to do this exploration. Scratch is free at scratch.mit.edu and if you're new to Scratch, don't worry, I'll explain as we go. So, we want to build a square in Scratch, and you can play along here and stopping the video wherever you need to and trying it out yourself. Now, at the moment, it comes with the default cat actor, and I'm not really interested in the cat actor, or sprite as it's referred to sometimes, so I'm going to get rid of it by clicking on the garbage bin there, and I'm going to select a new sprite, one that's more appropriate to what we want to do. I want to choose a pencil, and rather than searching for it that way, I'll just get the computer to do it for me, and there it is. And I've got a pencil. Now that's a little bit too big, so I'm going to reduce its size to 50. And I'm going to drag it somewhere that's um, of uh, use to us so I can draw the, the objects that we're after. Now you'll notice that as I drag this around, these figures down here change. These are the XY coordinates of the pencil. Kids don't really need to know this, but um, they will discover it by accident. So I'm going to set it to 0 and 100 so that I know that that's where we're going to start. So I want the, temp, the pencil to draw where it's been, so I'm going to call up um, a bunch of uh, commands that to deal with drawing. Now in the new version of Scratch, they're not here. You have to go and say, I want to specifically load them. So that's what we've done, and now we've got uh, all this stuff that we need to do. So I've um, got the erase all, stamp, pen down, etc, etc, and I'll be using the pen down uh, when we're talking about it. and I'll also set up a script to erase uh, the screen so that uh, we can test things out and not be compromised by stuff that was there beforehand. So let's decompose a square. We need to move, say, 50 steps then rotate 90 degrees and follow both of these instructions four times. It's best to have students walk this on the floor first rather than draw it as they'll immediately associate 90 degrees with the internal angle of a square and that's what, not what we need. We're changing our direction here. The required angle is a measure of how much the drawer needs to rotate. So our algorithm is to put the pen down so that we can see the square as it's drawn and rather than give the same instructions four times ask the computer to repeat them four times. Now let's build the code from our algorithm. Here's how we can turn our algorithm into scratch block code. 
First of all, I better give this a name at the top here. So I'm just going to type poly or something similar so I know what it is. And we'll need a pen to draw the square. Now there's no pen item over here on the left. So I'll get it from down here. And there's pen and Q. And now we've got a whole bunch of things that we can do with the pen. So we need to put the pen down. Where's pen down? There it is. And then we need to repeat. Now, repeat is in control. So there's a repeat there. And we need to repeat four times. So we'll put four in there, not 40. And what do we need to do then? We need to move. We need to move 50 steps. And we need to turn right, that's that one, uh, 90 degrees. Um, so now we better put these in the right order so that the computer knows which thing to execute when. We want the pen to go down, then we want to repeat four times, and these are the things that we want to repeat the move and the 50. There you go, that's great. So we've got our instructions, we've got them in the right order, but the computer doesn't know when to execute them. So we're going to go to events and say, well, when this event happens, I want you to execute it. And I'm going to choose when the green flag is checked. And that can be either this green flag or the one at the top. So we'll use the one at the top and let's see what happens. Click and it draws a square. Fantastic. Right, so now we've got a thing to do uh, making a square. But I want to do some other stuff here. I want to use this again in a slightly different way. So I need some code to get rid of what was drawn. So I start with a fresh screen. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my pen thing and I'm going to say, oh, I want you to get rid of everything. That's cool. And secondarily, I want you to move the pen back to where it was came from. Go back to where you came from. There he is there, and if you remember, we want that to be 0 and 100. There you go. So let's give this an event when we want that code to be executed. So we'll go back to events, and this time I'm going to choose when a key is pressed, but we won't use the space key because that won't make any sense. I'll choose E, standing for erase. Let's see what happens now. We press E on the keyboard, and beautiful, we're back to where we started from, which is fantastic. Now, could we modify the square code to make a triangle? How many times would we repeat and what change would we need to make to the angle? A triangle has three sides, so we repeat three times, but at what angle? We know that a triangle has 180 degrees, so it's tempting to say that each arm of the triangle will need to be at 60 degrees but this is the internal angle again. Like the square, we don't want that. We want to determine the amount of rotation that the drawer needs to make. If we imagine ourselves again walking the instructions on the floor to the right, we'd need to turn more than the 90 degrees when we drew a square. Now, this is a good time to transition from the walking the polygon to drawing it and knowing which angle represents the rotation needed. You can see that a rotation of 120 degrees is needed before we draw the next side of the triangle. So our algorithm becomes like this. Let's change our code from the square to a triangle. We realise that we need to repeat three times because there's three sides and we need to turn 120 degrees. Let's see how that goes. We'll click the flag and see what it does. Beautiful. It forms a triangle. That's exactly what we wanted. Let's press the E key to go back. And now we can start with our next one. Can we apply the same logic to a pentagon? We'd need to repeat five times now, match the five sides, and rotate 72 degrees, modifying our algorithm to look like this. Now to make our pentagon, we're going to need to repeat five times, there are five sides, and we need to change this angle here from 120 to 72. That's what we measured. So let's see whether that's going to work. Click, and there's our pentagon. Fantastic. Are you noticing a pattern here? The rotation angle is related somehow to the number of sides as the algorithm is essentially the same for all of our polygons so far. 
Can you measure or predict the rotation angle for a hexagon? Yep, if we divide 360 by the number of sides, we get the correct rotation angle. Isn't that good? We now have a much more powerful algorithm to draw an irregular polygon. We just have to change the thing that varies the number of sides. We decomposed regular polygons to their basics and then we saw a pattern which we then generalized into the model of any regular polygon. Can we do this in Scratch? Most programming environments that programmers use allow the programmer to build generalized functions or procedures. Uh, the difference is not really important at this stage. Scratch is no different. It calls these making a new block and we can do this in the My Blocks area. So down the bottom here you can see My Blocks. We're going to go and we're going to make a new block and this new block we will call Polygon. I know it should be regular polygon, but we'll just say polygon. And we know that all we need to do is to tell it the number of sides and it will be able to work stuff out. So we will say, right, add an input, a number of text, and that's going to be the number of sides. And we'll say OK to that. And now we've got a thing called a definition of a polygon. And we need to tell it, you know, to define what that polygon actually is. Well, thankfully, we've got most of the stuff here. Bang. So when we click, we need to ask someone how many sides they want, and we'll do that in sensing. So there's an ask thing here, so we'll put in ask, and we'll ask uh, how many sides, and then we'll get an answer from them, and that answer is available here. And if we go back to my blocks, we can say, well, after you've determined how many sides, I want you to send that answer to the procedure called polygon. So the polygon is going to receive a number, which is the number of sides that it's got. And we are going to go and grab that sensor thing again. And we're going to say, repeat, not five, but repeat however the answer is, and then we'll need to divide 360 by the number of sides. And we can't do that straight in there. We have to go and find an operator to do that, a mathematical operator. So we'll go and grab the mathematical operator and we'll do to divide 360, 360 degrees by the answer, which is back in here. Here it is, and we'll go and bung the answer into there. And then we'll say, well, that's how many degrees we want you to turn. Oh. Now let's see how that goes. We'll do a test. So let's run this. And how many sides do we want? Well, let's try six for our hexagon. And it goes off and draws the hexagon for us. Let's erase. And let's now say, well, let's run him again and say 12. Double that and press return. And we get a lovely whatever 12 are gone is. I used to know, but I don't anymore. Now, off we go. There is one change that I'd like to make over here, and some of you may already have noticed this. If we erase and then move, if the thing isn't back to where it started from, then we're going to leave a trail because the pen is still down. So we can either put a pen up at the end of the polygon or we can reverse the order of these things. This is something that will happen quite a lot in your classroom where the kids say, I've told it to erase everything, but it's still drawing. And that's because you told it to erase everything and then go somewhere and you still had the pen down, you hadn't told it to go up. So that's a handy thing to realise when you're uh, doing this in class with kids. In this video, you've heard things like we could change the color of the pen or the size of the polygon, but let's not worry too much about this for the moment. This is also abstraction. We're exploring shape only, so we dismiss all the things that are not relevant to shape. We're dealing with the form. We decomposed the regular polygon forms, we recognized the pattern, generalized, then abstracted to the model of a regular polygon. And this gave us our algorithm, which we could then turn into code. There's a working copy of the regular polygon code used at the address below. 
Have a look, maybe remix it to include a request for the length of each side as well as the number of sides. What happens when you specify 360 sides of length 1? What happens when you specify two sides of length 50? Think about the benefits of abstraction, but also consider its disadvantages. Our world is rarely regular. Unlike our polygons, any abstraction we deduce may promote biases. This becomes super important when abstractions are used to design artificial intelligences which are trained on biased data.